I've been, been very lucky that I've been able to swing a ball for a long time and from a young age. He's made the ball tall. Trent swings it, I swing it, and Neil does his thing. He's got it! England have won the World Cup by the barest of margins! We're probably two metres away from being, being world champions. Well, plenty of ICC uh, lockdown shows to uh, take a look at. We've got interviews, we've got panel shows, and today, another one. It's an interview time, and I'm um, pleased to be joined by New Zealand fast bowling legend Tim Southey, who's, uh, like me, in lockdown in New Zealand. And um, Tim, first of all, I guess, uh, how's the lockdown situation been for yourself, uh, your wife, Briar, uh, Indy, and Sloan, who's relatively new on the scene? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, strange times for everyone. It's um, something that we're all in together. Um, it's uh, we're 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 currently in Hamilton. Um, that lockdown at, at home. Um, it's been it has been nice to be at home for a, for a period of time. Um, haven't been at home at this time of year for a long time, so it's uh, it's been nice to reintroduce myself to the family and and spend some time with the kids um, after what's been a, a long summer. But it's uh, it is strange times. Um, what's happening in the world and. And it's uh, it's affecting everyone in, in different ways. Um, so it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's about waiting and seeing what what's what's going to happen from here. Training wise, um, what have you been able to do, or have you uh, incorporated maybe some household jobs into your training? Um, what what have you been able to get into? Uh, it's been a bit of a mix from giving the body a bit of a rest after what was a a, a longish season. So um, that's been nice to to recharge and, and give the body a rest and. Um, park the park the tools away for a while, so, and then um, off late, sort of start to get back into uh, a bit of running, and um, and managed to grab a few a uh, few weights and whatnot before um, before lockdown. So I got a little bit of a, a gym set up in the garage, um, which I'm sure once we know more of what's going to happen over the coming months, then uh, that'll get a, a bit more use. But um, but it's just ticking away, keeping the body moving after after a little bit of time off after the season. You say give the body a bit of a rest. I mean, it, it must be nice to recharge. You wouldn't have had this amount of time off or, or this long without probably being in, in some sort of serious competition for quite a long time, I would imagine. Yeah, it has. It's, uh, it, is, it is a bit foreign to not only me, but every other cricketer is probably going through the same. And um, it is nice to, to have a rest, but, um, but I'm sure everyone's missing it just as much. And um, I'm sure the fans are, are missing not seeing sport on TV as well. So. Um, Hopefully it's not too long and we're back out there playing. Gone this time. The woodwork has been disturbed again. And Southey has bowled another straight delivery. The off pole disappears. At 31 years of age, do you find it, it takes you a little longer to recover, or a little longer to get up to speed than it did six, seven, eight years ago? What are the differences you're finding in, in maybe the, the training regime or getting back into, um, into the physical exercise of bowling? Uh, yeah, I think no matter what age you are, starting bowling again um, always has its challenges. Always have uh, it's, 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 a, it's something that's heavily impacted on your on your joints and your body. And, and if you do if you don't do it for a while, um, it, 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 it can take a while to sort of get going. I, I personally prefer it when you don't have too long off. You sort of keep going, and once you get your body up and going, you sort of keep running through the season. And the guys are a, a lot fitter, even from where I first started to to where we are now, ten or twelve years on. Got him, absolutely, through Andre Russell this time. You talk about when you started, uh, 2008, wasn't it, Napier in your first Test match against England, played a, an under-19 World Cup just not long before that. I think you'd played um, a couple of 2020 games for the Black Caps prior when you went into that under-19 World Cup. What Was it always about swing bowling for you, Tim? It, it, were you ever trying to be genuinely quick or was it just the fact that the, the, the maybe the swinging ball was was your biggest weapon yeah it's i think it's always been i've always been able to swing the ball um i've never been express pace so i've sort of never really worried about bowling trying to bowl 150 kilometers an hour um so yeah i've sort of uh, worked with what i've gotten and, um and, and and swing's been my my uh, i guess my biggest Biggest strength, and so it's about about trying to maximise that and, and how I can use that. And I've been been very lucky that I've been able to swing a ball for for a long time. And from a young age, I don't know how, I don't know why, but ever since I started playing cricket, I was able to bowl bowl an out swinger. So um, I think it's it goes back to having a a good wrist position and um, and being able to I guess ingrain that over a, a long period of time. Oh, close, maybe going down, no given. 
came back sharply to the left-hander. He's not going to bother reviewing it. Good length. Wow, look at that movement. That's out. That's done him for pace, everything. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to be able to bowl 150 k's, but um, <laughs> but uh, back to bowling, bowling what I bowl. The body wouldn't hold up as well if you were trying to bowl 150. I don't think, mate. Um, what do you remember of that that Test match debut uh, in Wellington? Is, is it a distant memory? You still got great uh, great fond memories of it. 77 runs, obviously the the five wicket bag. Uh, it doesn't actually feel like that long ago. It's um, I guess when you say 2000. It is it is a long time ago, but um, but yeah, it's gone gone extremely quickly, and, and that's the scary thing is that that was now twelve years ago, and you're sort of sitting here and going, it doesn't feel feel like twelve years ago. Um, but um, yeah, it was a special special time. It was a dream come true. Um, Nineteen years old, and and a chance to represent your country. And another special thing was it was Stephen Finney's last Test match, so it was a it was a great honour to be able to play with one of uh, one of our greats um, in his his last Test match. Um, and, and yeah, it was a disappointing result. Um, we ended up losing, losing quite convincingly, I think, in the end to to a, to a good England side. But it was nice to to come in and, and know that I can perform at that level, um, and uh, and to take some wickets and, and manage to to slog a few on the on the last day as well. <laughs> uh, we've just had the New Zealand Cricket Awards. They've been held online, obviously, over the last uh, couple of days. You picked up the Windsor Cup for first class bowling again and the New Zealand Test Bowler of the Year award. The last couple of years have been brilliant, uh, in particular in, in Test Match Cricket for yourself. What's changed from those early days, you go back to 2008, 2009, maybe 10, to now? What have you um, learnt? What are you better at? I know you've developed that cutter, the, the three-quarter ball that we talk about a lot in commentary. How do you feel your game has evolved and changed? Um, I guess you come in as a, a 19 year old, you're young, you're naive, you probably think you've got the Polish game, but you're far from it. Um, and, uh, and, you, and you sort of learn, of, you're in and out of the side, you sort of come in, you have some success, and all of a sudden you think, oh yeah, I can do this. And then a um, few bad performances, you're out, you're back playing first class cricket, um, you're chopping and changing formats. Um, so it's all quite a lot to, to deal with. And, and when you're young, you're sort of trying to I'm sure all young people think they, they, they got under control, but looking back now, you're sort of like, you wish you knew what you, you knew now. But um, but I think as you get older, you've got experience on your side, you can call back on previous experiences, whether they're good or bad. Um, and I think as international sports people, you're always looking to, to develop your game. And as you mentioned, the, the three-quarter ball, I played around for a long time trying to bowl an in-swinger. Um, wasn't able to do it. Watched the likes of James Anderson, um, who can swing it both ways at, at will. And, um, tried to pick up ways to, to try and bowl it um, and then got to a point where I was, I was worried about losing my outswing by worrying about bowling the inswing. So then you sort of go back and you're like, well, what other ways can you do it? And that three-quarter ball um, with a scramble seam is sort of, it, it's been something that's worked and um, I learned that off uh, Kyle Mills, who, who was similar. He was obviously had a good outswinger and, and could, could also run that, that three-quarter ball back into, into right-handers and, and across the left-handers. Um, another thing as well is the use of the crease, I think, because um, I don't have that express pace that, that some bowlers do, you've got to be a little bit smarter in the way that you operate, and I guess um, changing your angles on the crease is, is another one of those ways. Yeah, I mean, it's not only something that's worked for you in the subcontinent, I mean, you use it on green seeming pitches in New Zealand as well, to, to the left-handers and the right-handers, so Although it has worked for you on the drier surfaces of the subcontinent and maybe in the second innings, it's still something you can use on a green pitch as well. Yeah, I think it's important to to be able to mix it up and use it as much as possible. Um, and saying that, but you don't want to overuse it, can then guys get used to it. But uh, but if you if you continue to sort of swing it away, swing it away, and especially the right handers are able to leave you and leave you and leave you, it's nice to have something that can can either hold its line or or, or come back a touch and just just try and keep them. Uh, a little bit honest and, and sometimes when it's not swinging um, and there is a little bit of seam assistance in the wicket then that, that ball becomes even more dangerous where it can can hit the seam and, and do something off the seam. You mentioned James Anderson there, uh, how much inspiration do you take from someone like that? He's uh, 37 years of old, he's played 150 
won test matches. I'm not sure that you're going to get to that many, to be honest. But 584 wickets in those 151 test matches. At 37, do you look at him and think, you know, that's something that I can still do? Is that a goal or do you just take it year by year at the moment? I don't think we play enough test cricket to, to get anywhere near that. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, he's you know, a phenomenal bowler for for a long time and someone that I, I thoroughly enjoy watching. Obviously, a, a fellow swing bowler and um, and watching him at his at his best is, is phenomenal. And uh, and seeing him at the age he is now, still being able to do it, um, it's uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to watch. And then hopefully he's got a got a few more years in him. Um, I think age is. There's only a number. If you can still tune out the, the the numbers that he's tuning out, the performances that he's tuning out, then um, then why not keep playing? So um, yeah, his, his record speaks for itself. Um, to, to first of all play 150 Test matches um, is an amazing feat on its own, let alone doing it as a as a fast bowler. So um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a great career, and and hopefully we can continue watching him. And he's he's been great for the game and. And me personally, as a swing bowler, looking up and, and watching someone like him, it's, uh, it's always a pleasure. Bowled him this time, though. Straight through him. Got it full. Got the Yorker in. Good bowling, Southie. So many people in the last three, four years have, have admired this New Zealand test attack in particular, which is what I'm going to focus on. Yourself and Neil Wagner and Trent Bolt. How close are you? How close do you monitor each other? Do those guys look at you? And I mean, I go back to, to when we were probably at our best, uh, Chris Cairns, Dion Nash, myself, we used to kind of coach each other rather than worry too much about the bowling coaching side of things. Do, do those guys help you out? Are you, are you a tight-knit unit like that? Uh, yeah, we're very tight. Uh, the, the three of us are, are great mates and uh, Neil obviously made the move up to, to um, Tauranga uh, a couple of years ago. He, he now finally saw the light, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he's made a couple of moves. His, his first good move was to get on the second good move to the North Island. So, um, yeah, he, he saw the light and came. He, he missed us when he went around, so he had to move a bit closer yeah. to us. But yeah, we, we, we're great mates, and um, and I think we, we work extremely well together. We all offer something something different. Obviously, got two left armers and myself. Trent swings it, I swing it, and Neil does does his his thing. Um, and and he's he's one of a kind. I think um, we've seen other sides around the world try and implement Neil's tactics at various times, but but no one seems to have been able to do it for. As well and as successful as he as he has, um, he's got an engine on him where he just runs in all day and he's half mad, which uh, which I guess helps um, <laughs> the style of bowling that he bowls. Um, and then Trent uh, doing his thing. I think another another person who probably flies under the radar is, is Colin McGronholm, who who chips in with yeah. his overs as well and does a does a great job. Doesn't really get the I guess the the headlines and the accolades for what he does, but he's always he's always there or thereabouts. Um, bowls number of overs that you want from your all rounder, and uh, and he's he's always very very helpful for that one or two wicket here and wickets here and there. Um, but yeah, it's it's a great bowling unit to be a part of. Um, not only those guys, but we saw Kyle Jamison come in, um, and and show that he's he's capable at this level as well. And and you've got Matt Henry who's who's sitting there waiting. Waiting as well, so it's um it's great to have that competition um, around the group. I think we, we push each other at trainings. We uh, as I say, we're, we're very good friends, so we're sort of always looking at ways to to improve uh, as a group and and push each other in in, um, in in other areas as well. One of the strengths I think of this New Zealand side and, and that bowling attack is part of it, but it's the senior players, the likes of Ross Taylor around you, um, Tom Latham, who's taken on a leadership role yourself, Trent Kane. Uh, he's got a lot of guys, um, Kane Williamson, that he can go to or to have something to say. And uh, you don't have to hear from the same voice all the time. I suppose that certainly helps as well. Yeah, I think we're very lucky with, the, I guess, the guys. There's a group of guys that have played a lot of cricket together for a long period of time, which I think helps. Um, another one you, you throw in there is BJ Watling, um, who, who does an incredible job. Um, who's a, a leader in his own way. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great to have those guys. I know when you look around, you look around and see familiar faces that you've played a lot of cricket with. You get a bit of an understanding over time at how how various players work. And um, and I guess that's the, the connection that we've all got is that we, we know each other's games. We've played a long period of time together and, and we're all willing to, to help out. And we've all got the, the common goal of, of wanting the New Zealand um, cricket side to do well. So I think it's a, it's a good mix. And then guys sort of coming in and, 
and coming into a, a good environment, um, one that's I guess had a bit of success as well, and and they sort of um, come in and, and are able to, to to express themselves as well. Captaincy wise, um, you've had that opportunity to captain your country uh, on a few occasions now. What have you taken from the likes of Brendan, who uh, obviously captained you quite a lot? and Kane to bring into your style of captaincy and is it any different to, to both those guys? Um, yeah, I've been fortunate to, to step in every every now and then when, when Kane hasn't been there in um, the T20s. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I guess I learned a lot from Brendan, the way that he came in and um, he's probably one of the best man managers of, of people I've, I've ever come across and the way that he was able to, to turn us around as a side um, was amazing. And, McCollum is at it. Six over extra. And it was very inspiring. I think um, he's a he's a he's a great leader, um, and he's someone that I think everyone learned from. Um, as I said, Kane, I think he's he's learned a lot from him as well. Um, and everyone sort of, I guess, they take bits of of various captains they've had, um, and then they sort of put their own sort of spin on it. Um, we've been lucky to have some have some good leaders over the over the period of time, and. And, um, and we're very fortunate to have a, have a very good one at the moment. So I think we, we all learn a lot from Brendan, um, also learn a lot from, from other captains. It was when I started, we had the likes of Dan um, as well, it was, it was a good captain. And I guess you grab bits and pieces from, from them and, and sort of mould your own um, and, and hope that it works. Tim Southey, captaining Tim Southey, how would you react? What, what sort of bloke are you to captain? Are you all right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, oh, it depends what, what phase of my career I was in or what, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I imagine I'd be reasonably easy. Um, I, I enjoy thinking about the game, um, so I think when you, when you do, so when you are captain, especially in T20 cricket, it's, it's nice to, um, I guess have your, have your mind ticking over and, and thinking about, um, what play you're going to make next and, and whatnot, so, um, so yeah, I think, uh, yeah, although I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, I, I do enjoy thinking about the game as well. Edged and gone on Taylor this time. Southie's got seven. When it comes to, to bowling the death overs, bowling those last overs, bowling the super overs, I mean, you, time and time again, you put your hand up. You want to do it. Why? What makes you want to do it? Uh, and, and how do you deal with the, the successes and the failures of, of, uh, of what comes with that? Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's one of those jobs that can be horrible or it can be amazing. I think when, and I think you try and look at the, the positive side of it when it does come off and when you, you're on a little bit of a hide and nothing most of the time as a bowler at those those times of an innings. But when you do do your job, it's very satisfying. You walk in and, and you've closed out a game um, or you've you've restricted a side in the first innings by, by bowling well at the depth and then you chase it down with, with a couple of overs to spare, then you sort of look back and go, "Oh, that death phase was was crucial in, the, in our win." So I think the satisfaction that comes from from doing the job um, is great, and I think that's what makes you tick. And um, I guess the the disappointments you go through, um, the hurt that you go through, the those super overs this summer where it was time and time again, and, and we're on the wrong side of it, and you sort of you just yeah, it's a it's a horrible feeling. You feel like you've let, let your side down, you've let your fans down um and uh and yeah it's just you, you just want an opportunity to to be able to do it again and and uh and not shy away from those i think you can get beaten up at times um but you've got to keep keep wanting to i guess uh have that has that satisfaction of, of being able to i guess close out a, a game or an innings because it's easy to forget what came before the super over was a cracking game of cricket isn't it but everybody sort of focuses on the on the 12 balls that followed the actual game that was was a brilliant game of cricket yeah i, I figured that out <laughs> that, um, <laughs> that a game within a game and um and you sort of do lose sight of what what actually happened and and uh you look back on that series and we lost we lost five nil but um we could have easily been on the other side of, of possibly four of those games um we were outplayed in the first time but i think in the other four we were in a position to to win those games and i guess um the lasting memory is that super over so whatever happens in that people sort of tend to remember um and that's that's sport and that's part and parcel of it um and it makes you want to be on the right side of it next time mm. um you, your journey through the icc cricket world cup in, in england i know uh, not a lot of game time but uh what were your sort of what were your thoughts on that and how, how did you enjoy that ride right through the the icc world cup in england yeah it was a strange one um see 
you look back and uh, got an injury, picked up an injury on the eve of the tournament, so that we got there and we played a warm-up game against uh, India, and so picked up a calf injury, didn't think too much of it, thought I'll be right in a few days' time, and um, it was a little bit worse than than, uh, than than what I expected, and I think it's uh, initially you're sort of like something you, you wanted to be a part of for four years, having been involved in the one in 2015 in, in New Zealand, Australia, and um, and, and, and how amazing that was. Um, you've sort of been, been uh, looking forward to this moment for, for four years and then all of a sudden you, you blow a calf out where you've never done a, a calf or a hamstring in your, in your career. It's, sort of, it's a little bit devastating at times, but you've got to just, just crack on and, um, and try and do what's, what's best for the side and you sort of get, you try and get yourself right. And if, a, if an opportunity does arise to play, then, then you're ready to go and, um, and try and make the most of it. Go bold and straight a bit of drift in and a nice little cameo from Rashid comes to an end yeah it's disappointing on a personal front that um that you wait that long to to play and you you, you don't really you play one game of the tournament but um but to be a part of the ride was was amazing I think um it was different to 2015 um but I think the way that we sort of scrapped our way through um had a mm. had a couple of close wins And it sort of, sort of, I guess, highlighted the the way that the side played. We're, we're a bunch of scrappers that were no one, no one sort of expected us to go go that far in the tournament. Um, you hear the stuff that was going on when we made the semi-finals of, of sides wanting to play, well, play New Zealand and whatnot. And um, when people were at the start of the tournament, were, were picking their top fours. Not many pick pick New Zealand, and, and we kind of like that. We kind of flying under the radar and. Uh, and we just we just go about our business. We don't worry about what's going on outside the group. We worry about what this group's trying to achieve. And, and that was like every other team there was to, to win the World Cup. And we we came within within a couple of meters of doing that. So um so yeah, it was uh, a strange ride, I guess, in the way that it ended. But it was if you if you peel that back and you you think of that game and what it did for for cricket and I guess the spectacle that it was. Um and I guess the way that uh, yeah it was. Would have loved to have been on the other side of it. And as I say, we're we're probably two meters away from being being world champions. But um, but yeah, I think as a as a group, we did a did a great job. Um, and I'm sure New Zealand was was proud of the way that we we played. We we scrapped our way through, and we were we were so close. Gatto's going to push for two. They've got to go. It's got to throw. It's got to go to the keeper's end. He's got it. England have won the World Cup by the barest of margins. By the barest of all margins. You, you say two metres, and, and you're obviously talking about the Martin Guptill thing. I say it was probably about an inch and three quarters of Ben Stokes' edge of his back. Uh, you know, we, we can go one way or the other on, on that whole, uh, what cost New Zealand that final, I suppose. How was the feeling afterwards in the dressing room? Was there a, a sense of, I mean, obviously it was disappointment. Was there also a sense of pride? Did someone, was there someone that was able to stand up and say, boys, look what we've done. Uh, look at what's happened today. And, and they will talk about this game for years and years to come. It was a, it was a, it was a strange, strange, strange feeling. Like we, what we'd gone through, the, the a roller coaster of. Even think back to the semi final where we had to come back over two days, um, and uh, like millimeters in that, the run out of Donny, um, and you're sort of sitting there thinking, oh, we got through on the skin of our teeth, and we, we sort of, we, we're in a position in the final. We've got a, got some uh, runs on the board, and and. Yeah, I guess uh, there's a number of things you look back on. It was just a, a crazy day, but um, but as you see, said, I think it's if you peel it all back and you remove the emotion of being caught up in and what actually happened, um, which is hard to do for for us as players. But then if you're able to do it and you think of what it did for, for the game, and as you say, a, a spectacle. Um, if you had a someone had a said that the World Cup final was going to be tied, um, they're going to play a Super Over. That's going to be tied as well, I think. Um, no one would have would have believed you, but uh, but it's hard because we did come so close. Um, but um, but yeah, it is. I think if you peel it back and remove the emotion, then um, then it is. I think it has been good for for the game. Well, that one's gone. Another opportunity, whether it's later this year in Australia or, or, or maybe it's next year. We don't know the, the ins and outs of what um, you know what this uh, this year will bring. Yet a T20 World Cup. Uh, excited about the prospects of that. Excited about the prospects of 
of um, playing for the Black Caps in, in a T20 World Cup again? Yeah, excited about, about playing again. Hopefully not too too far away, but uh, but I think any time there's a, a world event, it's always exciting, um, whether it's the Champions Trophy, T20 World Cup, or or the the, the ICC uh, 50 Over World Cup. It's always a, a, a great great tournament, um, and, and I know the T20, the way that the game's gone over the last number of years, it's something that um, we've got a lot of the guys are looking forward to, obviously close to close to home, being in Australia, um, and, uh, and yeah, it's something Hopefully that uh, that that'll um, we can get. I guess we'll get to know about what's going to happen over the over the coming times. But um, but yeah, it's, it's something that I'm sure the guys are, are very looking, very much looking forward to, and I'm personally looking forward to. It. All right, what's uh, the rest of lockdown hold for you, Tim? I know we're all uh, we're all in level three at the moment in New Zealand. You're about 15 kilometres away from where I live right now, but uh, we've got to do this. Is I'm guessing it's uh, you catching up with family and friends via. Um, by Skype, by FaceTime, by all those things. Yeah, there's plenty of uh, plenty of phone calls and and whatnot to, to family members. Um, uh, Bryce's family's around the corner, so uh, we've uh, yeah sort of kept in touch with them and um, and uh, sort of invited them into our to our bubble. Um, having um, grandparents around for the kids, it's been nice to, to offload them for for an hour or so or a couple of hours to, to up. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I think um, the further we go on, the the, the training will increase. Um, but at the moment, it's just a, a mix between between family life and um, and a bit of training. All right, Tim. Um, really appreciate your time. Congratulations again on the the winning of the of the Windsor Cup and of the New Zealand Test Bowler of the Year as well, and the and the recent New Zealand awards. And take care in, uh, in the rest of this lockdown, and hopefully we we'll see you back on the park shortly. Eh? Thanks very much for your time, mate. Thank you very much, Dolly.